before I get into this review, there are a few things that I kind of sort of want to talk about that I didn't talk about on my raw review. Number one, why wasn't I think it, I think it was Nicole Bass, God rest her soul, if I got her name wrong. Why wasn't she mentioned on last night's Raw when the other two that passed away were mentioned? And for both nights, why do they only have the African American performers or the black performers or the black commentary only doing that black history of segments of the entire show? And why do they seem so scripted? It just seems in extremely awkward and I just don't get it. I don't get it at all. But other than that, guys, it's SmackDown time. Let's talk about tonight's SmackDown. I haven't really done these in a while. And honestly, I'm kind of happy that I did watch tonight's show. Because I'm going to be honest with y'all. SmackDown is literally blowing Raw out the water. There are times that Raw can actually hit it. and there's, But most of the time, it's been missing it. Now, when it comes to this SmackDown Live, it started off controversial. Well, not so much. In my eyes, it's controversial. It started off heartbreaking, mostly. But then, it, in my eyes, it still feels controversial. And then it ended with a controversy. Kind of. Kind of paying homage to the Royal Rumble. I don't remember what year it was, but I know it either happened at the Rumble or at SummerSlam. I can't remember. But other than that, let's talk about the intro of the show. This was something that a lot of people were afraid of and some people predicted, but they didn't think they were going to go through with it. Naomi, unfortunately, had to give up her title because of the knee injury that was caused by Alexa Bliss and a botch that she, that, that between her and Naomi at an Elimination Chamber for their title match. Unfortunately, when eliminate, when, um, at Elimination Chamber, when Alexa Bliss was, I can't remember what the move is called, when she does the, the two somersaults. Instead of her landing on her abdomen, she actually landed on her knee. And it really did mess up her knee. And she ended up having to forfeit the title. Now, here is my overall theory, and this is what pisses me off the most. When it comes to Naomi, not only did Naomi win on a non-Big Four pay-per-view, which she should have won at, at WrestleMania since in her hometown of Orlando, I have literally seen every performer in the WWE have wrestled with a knee injury unless it was something that was already stated. For example, when it comes to Seth Rollins, we end up finding out tw less than 48 hours that uh, what the possibility of the injury could be. That it could be the possibility that he actually did tear his, um, his ACL again. We ended up finding that out within two days. When it comes to Naomi, she ended up, it, it's been nearly a week. We have no idea what is going on with her knee. We did know that she was injured. When she won the belt the first time and actually did do her promo, she said that she was fighting with an injury that no one knew about. But the fact of the matter is, is that the public knew what happened to Seth Rollins within 48 hours of his knee knowing and making it making it to be a legit injury. When it came to Sasha Banks, when Sasha Banks was injured, nobody knew what happened to her back. She just hurt her back. We don't even know what happened to her knee. She just hurt her knee. I kind of find it a bit suspect, the fact that we actually do hear from these these top tier wrestlers on uh, in this brand, whether it's Raw or SmackDown, if they're like the top guys or the top women, we end up hearing about their injury within maybe 24 to 48 hours, less than a week. We have no idea what's going on with Naomi. But for some strange reason, the fact that they did not have a tournament to actually give all the women a chance to be the champion and they choose Becky Lynch... Somebody that Alexa Bliss has already beaten before shows me that there is not that there can't be legitimacy to this injury. I'm sorry, I don't buy it. Something happened behind the scenes. I'm not trying to make a conspiracy here, but I'm seeing this happen twice. It happened with Sasha Banks. We still don't know what happened to her knee. And we don't know what happened to her back, but she lost the title multiple times to the same person over and over again. I am seeing the same process with Alexa Bliss. Why her? Why not Mickie James? Ever since Mickie James came back to the WWE, she has lost every match but one. 
I would have been fine if she was in a tournament or a battle royal with all the women being able to have a chance to get their to get their hands on this title. And it would have made sense if they did that since she had to vacate it. But for some strange reason, they still gave Alexa Bliss the number one contendership, contendership instead of her having to re-earn it because she's already had, I mean, she's already had her match and lost. Now, it doesn't make any sense to invoke her rematch clause because, unfortunately, Naomi cannot perform. So it makes sense for her to start all over again because in my, in my opinion, in my eyes, the rematch clause is invalid because you cannot face the champion because there is no champion. You would have to dump your name back into the hat and you would have to fight for it like everybody else. That is how I see it. And the fact that they chose Alexa Bliss and Becky Lynch shows me that they were going to push Alexa Bliss to the moon, even though it was Alexa Bliss's fault that Naomi got injured. And instead of her being pen uh, penalized for that, she got rewarded by being pushed. It makes no sense. I know they're saying that she's a heel. I get it. She can get massive amount of heel heat from this, but it's cheap heel heat. In my opinion, it's cheap heel heat to capitalize on a possible injury that you messed up on. And it's a possibility that her, in, that her knee may not be that badly tweaked. But they're using it as an excuse to push Alexa Bliss to the moon. And it looks like that Naomi might not even be involved in WrestleMania at all. Because the possibility that they might have a triple threat match between Alexa Bliss, Becky Lynch, and, and Mickie James. I'm seeing this happen. So I'm as, as much as I don't want to rant too much about this, I am seeing it's far too suspect. Seriously, this is far too much of an issue for me because I see this as suspect. I see it as the fact that they just don't want Naomi to have the title. And I'm not trying to throw the race card out here, but the fact that they did the same exact thing to Sasha Banks shows me that something is not right. I'm sorry. I'm saying that, and I'm holding true to it. Something's not right. Something stinks in this entire situation. And it, it's not anything else. It's literally... Nothing else. This is how I personally see it. But I'm not going to rant too much about that. But I do see this as suspect. And I'm going to move on. Now, when it comes to the other matches tonight, the biggest thing of them all that everybody was talking about was the fact that we had a 10-man battle royal towards the end of the entire show to show who was going to win the championship. Now, before I get into that, I'm going to get into Nikki Bella versus Natalia. That match was pretty hardcore. Okay, it tried to be. Well, it was all right. Like it wasn't horrible or anything. It's just the fact that it didn't have a it didn't have a decent finish. It was setting up to another feud, which is something that kind of bothered me a little bit because they've already done that at the elimination chamber. It wasn't necessary to have it here because you want to have a decent finish. Those women were literally giving it their all at the very beginning. And yes, I actually did post <laughs> um yeah, I actually did post a brief video of the power slam that Natalia tried to do with Nikki Bella that looked a bit awkward and can probably put so many bad memes up. And I just put that up there. And I'm just, yeah, I, I, I'm keeping it real. That was very awkward looking. But other than that, it was a pretty hardcore hitting match until somehow, and I think that um, that Connor OK Fade pointed this out on Twitter that they kind of broke kayfabe for a second because Natalia was like, good job. And then Nikki was just kind of saying, oh, yeah, I know, right? I'm like, no, dude, you're not done with the match. You got to continue with it. And I know this is going to probably be on the WTF moments. I can, I can see this. I can see this happening. But, yeah, they kind of broke kayfabe for a second. And it briefly took you out of the match, especially when Natalia was like, I barely than you, Nikki, right after she said, good job, Nikki. Yeah, you can't really take that back. You got to remember that mics are all around you in every ounce of your performance. You have mics in the turnbuckles of the ring. You have mics underneath the ring. You have mics inside the microphones of the cameramen. Mics are everywhere. They can pick up your voice. And yes, we heard you, <laughs> which was weird. But other than that, they did their best to give it their all, and then they went backstage, and then once again, Nikki ran into Maurice, and it was setting up a match for WrestleMania between Maurice and Nikki and John Cena and The Miz, and I'll get to John Cena and The Miz a little bit later. 
but yeah this the whole fact that Maurice came out with a lead pipe and literally hit Nikki in the thigh and in the back yeah the, the whole David Otunga thing saying that she went Tanya Harding no hun I, I the fact that he literally brought up that really really out of date reference is straight up classic vintage David Otunga which shows you that that dude should not be there I mean, as much as he tries, and it seems like he is really trying hard to be a little bit more animated. That was the worst reference he could ever use, because I don't think anybody even knows what happened between Tanya Harding and Nancy Kerrigan, unless you were around in the 90s, in the early 90s. That's the only way that you would know that out-of-date reference is during that time it's either the, the 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 early 90s or the late 80s i can't remember but it was a long time ago and not a lot of people know what happened between nancy kerrigan and tanya harding because it was that far away that far in the back man that shows you how old i am but other than that no she he did not and she did not in any way shape or form go tanya harding on anybody because tanya harding hit, hit nancy kerrigan in the knee not the back or the thigh but I digress. I'll move on from there. The fact is, is that Natalia actually took advantage of it and she won with the pin one, two, three. The one thing I was hoping that Nikki actually did get her come up into against Natalia, even though Natalia literally went with her full force. And I did not want her to win as a heel because I do not want them to go back to this. It just seems like that Natalia just should have been done. Like, seriously, she should have had her comeuppance, she should have won clean, and had this whole thing over and done with. But unfortunately, it's not over and done with because it was a screwy finish, which means that this is open to continue. Uh, okay, moving on from there. After the whole Nikki thing, we had a whole bunch of weird promos with, with green screen that made no sense. Then you had Dolph Ziggler kicking a green screen to a villa green screen or kicking an invisible wall that had the green screen to make him seem a little bit more heelish, which looks stupid. It's like these weird promos that happen all night, and I don't get it. I don't understand the whole talking to the camera, trying to break fourth wall thing at this point in time it was dumb it was so very dumb it made no sense that was the only gripe that i had the night it was just stupid it was so f just freaking dumb and what dom ziggler did was straight up cartoony i'm sorry it really was it just it was weird but besides all that let's move on to the whole bray wyatt thing bray wyatt had promos pretty much throughout the entire night talking about how whoever wins is going to be their sacrificial lamb Blah, 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 blah. We are waiting for the heel turn. Everybody is biting their nails waiting for Randy Orton to go against Bray. We just know it. But it's going to happen at WrestleMania, y'all. It ain't going to happen on SmackDown. And if it does, they must have paid Randy a whole crap ton of money. I'm just going to say that. But let's move on to the final match of the night, the 10-man battle royal. Now, we actually did have a lot it was a lot going on and i'm not gonna lie when it came to the 10 man battle royal i already knew who i already thought in my mind who was going to win but they had some they had some pretty decent spots i mean they made you literally think that some of these guys were going to win of course baron corbin is everybody's favorite but once again baron corbin got eliminated by dean ambrose and dean ambrose had the ever-loving crap handed to him can we at least have dean ambrose fight this guy back he looks like a punk Compared to somebody as arbitrary as and mediocre as Baron Corbin. Seriously, can we have them like go, uh, 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 at least try to fight each other? I mean, come on. But other than that, moving on from there. The biggest moment of the night. And in my humble opinion, actually there were two big moments in the night. Number one... <laughs> We literally had The Miz, of course, get eliminated by John Cena, but that wasn't the biggest thing. The Miz, who already got eliminated, was able to eliminate John Cena when he was already eliminated, and that ended up still being legit. And they're saying that was part of the rules? No, JBL. I don't think it is. <laughs> Unless somebody has a rule book, by all means, leave the rules in the comments. Maybe it's something I missed. But if you're eliminated, that means you're gone. So why in the world should what you do affect the match? 
I never could understand the logic of that. Like, how can you be eliminated by somebody who's already gone? What they do should not count. And that's just me personally. Whatever they do should not count in the match or be legit. And the fact that The Miz was able to run in the ring and eliminate John Cena out the freaking blue. And nobody saw it. And John Cena ran in there like, wait, hold on. He was already, wait, what? Like, I don't know. That makes no sense to me. That is the most screwed up logic I have ever seen in my life. John Cena getting eliminated by The Miz when The Miz was already eliminated. Now I will understand that somehow if um, Luke Harper or AJ Styles eliminated John Cena and The Miz came back to, to, to literally beat the crap out of John Cena, I get that. But I don't get the fact that what The Miz did was legit. I, I, I don't know. I'm not fine. I, 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 could, I was confused about that. Now, let's move on to the most controversial moment of the entire night, and that was when the double elimination happened between Luke Harper and AJ Styles, the last two in the ring. Now, in my humble opinion, they're paying homage to what happened at the Royal Rumble. At least it was at the Royal Rumble. I can't necessarily remember if it was a Rumble or SummerSlam. But as far as I know, there was a double countout. In my opinion, and this is how I saw from my personal view, it looked like that AJ Styles landed first, and it looked like that Luke Harper landed second. But for some strange reason, the ref kept saying that, okay, you landed at the same time. All the refs were confused. We had no answers. Here comes Daniel Bryan saying that we will have to, they ended in a draw, and we have to find out who won next week. Here's my overall theory for this. I do believe that they're going to restart the match they're going to have a one-on-one -on -one match between AJ Styles and Luke Harper. And Luke Harper is going to win it to have a triple threat match with all three Wyatts going up against each other. And that is when Randy Orton is going to portray Bray and he is going to take the title away from him. Just like I have predicted before, I still believe this is going to be a transitional win. This goes from John Cena to Bray Wyatt and Bray Wyatt to Randall Keith Orton. That is my overall theory for this. So it's jacked up how we ended it with a controversial finish, but it makes you more intrigued on what's going to happen next week. So good job for them. Now, guys, my overall thoughts of SmackDown is this. There have been emotions that come out of me tonight that I never thought I had. I was literally screaming at the screen. I was pissed off at Alexa Bliss. I hated her character, which shows how much her character works as a heel, which shows how much I care. Now, yes, there were some really weird promos throughout the night that was extraordinarily cartoony and made no sense, but that does not take away the overall night. And yes, Natalia and Nikki broke kayfabe briefly, but that does not affect the entire show. It actually did, and even though I don't like the fact that it set up the whole mixed tag match between John Cena and... And John Cena and Nikki Bella with Maurice and The Miz, even though I don't necessarily like that, as well as the possible, the possible proposal after the match they win, which kind of makes me a bit suspect, but I did talk to somebody on Twitter about that, and they kind of have a, a valid point. Maybe he is ready, but I'm not getting into that. The thing is, is that it doesn't take away how good this show is. It's setting up everything, pretty much every match that they're setting up for WrestleMania they set it up so very well. And SmackDown has an entire month and a, and, and a few days. Actually, a month and a week to set up for WrestleMania. So if they screw this up, it's no excuse. They have plenty of time to do it. And even though Elimination Chamber only had a two-week build, it was a fairly decent pay-per-view. They had less time and they were able to make scraps out. They were able to make a four-course meal out of a bunch of scraps. And they're doing the same exact thing with this show here. They have a, a literally a full month and a week before they build up before WrestleMania actually comes. And they're doing an amazing job. I really do like this show. They did a great job tonight. I have no beef about it. And I want to know what your thoughts are. Leave it in the comment section below or vote on the little card that I have above on what you think of SmackDown and what your overall views of the show was, your favorite match, or what you would do to change it if you didn't like it. I want to know your overall thoughts and leave it in the comment section below as well as interact with the voting poll above you. Uh, thanks guys for watching. I will see y'all later. Peace out.